ibuprofen for coronavirus treatment? Not so fast. I'm Dr. Jen Caudle, and I'm coming back at you with an update to the video I made on March 13th about coronavirus, its symptoms, and how to treat it. We know that 80% of coronavirus symptoms are mild to moderate, okay? That means flu-like symptoms, cough, uh, you know, fever, things like that. And many people will be able to manage their symptoms, what we call supportively. That is using over-the-counter medications, uh, Tylenol, things like that. In a video that I made and published here on my Facebook page on Friday, March 13th, I said that you can use supportive care just as I'm doing now. And I said you could use Tylenol, you could use Motrin and things like that. Well, uh, I'm no longer recommending Motrin and you asking why? Probably because of things that you have seen in the news just like I am. Uh, the British Medical Journal came out yesterday uh, with a statement talking about how basically a lot of scientists and senior doctors are backing claims made by France's health minister um, saying that people who are showing signs of COVID-19 should avoid using ibuprofen, uh, which is an NSAID, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, and instead use paracetamol or also called acetaminophen. Uh, many people know this as Tylenol in the States. All right, this is uh, based on a tweet that the health minister, France's health minister, sent on the 14th of March and other studies and clinical information that we're getting saying that there could be potential problems and complications with people who have coronavirus that use Motrin to treat it. Um, there's been more evidence and more information that's been released about this. Um, and the theory is, well, there's a few theories. And by the way, let me just say off the bat, we still need more information, just like we do with so much with coronavirus. Um, but the theory is that non-steroidal anti-inflammatories may uh, change the immune system in such a way that actually allows coronavirus or COVID-19 to become worse or more serious. There are potentially other ways that uh, NSAIDs may negatively impact someone's clinical course, uh, someone who has coronavirus. So I'm updating my March 13th video with this evolving information. My recommendation is going to be to stick to Tylenol or acetaminophen at this point. However, what I would say is you need to talk to your individual doctors about what you should be on. Some of you are on chronic NSAIDs, uh, ibuprofens and things like that for other conditions or for other reasons. You've got to talk to your doctors individually to find out what you should be doing personally. Data and information is changing daily with this. And one of the things I'm going to do for you guys and for myself as we move forward with these videos is to put a date stamp on the video so you can see which came first, which came second. Because honestly, we are learning every day. And I'm promising you that the information that we get is going to change. It just will. We think one thing on Monday, by Friday, we're going to think something different. It doesn't mean that we're wrong. It means that the information is evolving. And that's why I'm working my hardest to keep you and the rest of us healthcare providers up to date. So I'm gonna be doing date stamps. The other thing I would recommend for you as you're consuming information out there on coronavirus is look for the source, number one. Make sure that you're going to a reputable source. Go to the World Health Organization, go to the CDC. Um, those are important information sources to go to. The other thing is I would look for date stamps on the information that you're reading, okay? Because an article written about coronavirus a month ago is going to be different than an article written about today. So guys, I hope this is helpful. Again, I'm coming at you every single day. I'm keeping it real about coronavirus, telling you what we know, what's evolving. Uh, I'm Dr. Jen Cottle. Make sure that you check back for daily videos.